welcome everyone once again to Talking Point. I'm Mayor Mike, and on this episode we have members of the Wisconsin-Nicaragua Partnership, Patty Rouse and Amy Wiesa. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So the uh, Wisconsin-Nicaragua Partnership is different than the Sister City Program, uh, and I think it's been around even longer. Amy, why don't you tell us how the uh, Wisconsin-Nicaragua Partnership got started? Yes, we do have quite an extensive history, and it is different than the Sister Cities. We are not part of Sister Cities International, and we're part of Partners of the Americas, which is the larger organization. And that's been around since 1964. Uh, Presidents Eisenhower and Kennedy had the vision that the Americas need to work better together, and if we had programs where they could interact, we all might get along better. Um, so since 1964 is when Partners of the Americas was established and it came from the Alliance for Progress, which was the government program. Okay. And so today it's a private nonprofit organization. And almost all 50 states in the United States are linked with a country in Central America, South America, or the Caribbean. And we have programs connecting people to people in both areas. And Wisconsin is partnered with Nicaragua exclusively. Okay. Some states in the United States um, have several states that are partnered with like Brazil and Mexico, okay. being that the, uh, they're a much larger country. But it's nice because Wisconsin is exclusive to Nicaragua. And we celebrated 50 years of our partnership in 2015. And also Wisconsin is a little bit different than some of the other states in that we have partner cities. Okay. And that's where the Stevens Point Esteli Partner City comes in. There's about 25 uh, partner cities in the state of Wisconsin, and our state office, Wisconsin Nicaragua Partners, is located in Stevens Point. So even though we have the Stevens Point Esteli Partner City, mm -hmm. we also have programs for the whole state of Wisconsin and the whole country of Nicaragua. How did Stevens Point get paired with Esteli Nicaragua, and how did the, the program take off? Well, uh, to back up just a little bit, Wisconsin got partnered with Nicaragua because uh, we have the same geographic size. Um, back in 1965, when Wisconsin and Nicaragua were incorporated together, it was almost the same population. Okay. Uh, we also both share an inland lake. Uh, they have an ocean on either side. We have the Great Lakes. Right. Uh, the northern portion of Wisconsin had valuable forest land, kind of the same thing in Nicaragua. Right. Uh, so we shared some of those commonalities, and that's how Wisconsin got paired with Nicaragua. Then um, in 19, I guess it was the early 90s, um, Hans Schabel and Alan Haney uh, and a couple other uh, professors from the College of Natural Resources had a program in Esteli, and that's how Stevens Point and Esteli kind of got together. And that's when Mayor Scott Schultz mm -hmm. was here, and uh, my mother was actually a part of that. And uh, perhaps now is the best time as ever to sure. <laughs> explain how well, I... And your mother w was instrumental in making the, the program what it is today and actually kind of roped you into doing it. Uh, uh, talk about that. Roped putting it mildly. <laughs> 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 um, in the early 90s, um, my mother and I had both graduated from UWSP a semester apart, and she did not go to college until after all of her four children were out of the house, and I was the last one to be out of the house. And so she decided she wanted to pursue her education, and UWSP was in her backyard, and so she enrolled and she pursued her interests of international studies. and. Uh, she was interested in doing something international, and one might think, living in Stevens Point, what could you do international? Well, she, at that time, met Hans Schabel and some of the others that were forming the Stevens Point Esteli Partner City. And so for my graduation present from college, she bought me a ticket to go to Nicaragua. Oh, nice. So we could go on a fact-finding mission and find out, was this something that she wanted to pursue? Well, she came back, and she... Um, took the Stevens Point Esteli Partner City to the next level, being the chairperson. And then the state office was located in Madison at t that time of Wisconsin Nicaragua Partners. And so she moved the office from Madison to Stevens Point. And she had asked the university chancellor for one month of rent free in Nelson Hall um, to raise some money so we could then become a rent paying customer. And so right now our office is located in Nelson Hall. 
It's room 129, right? Correct, yes. And uh, my mom and I were really good friends, and I, I loved my mom, and I said, I'll help you out. I said, but this is nothing that I'm interested <laughs> in doing long term. Famous last and, words. And uh, yeah, never say never. So um, I did help her out, and, uh, and I ended up doing my research for my master's thesis in Nicaragua with our Learning Center program. And I started working in the office just a couple hours a week, and, and one thing led to another. And then in 2009, she was with a group of volunteers, and uh, she had a fatal accident and uh, did not return. Um, and uh, before she left, I did say, don't think you're going to leave. Don't leave me with this ever. And, you know, it, strange things happen. But it. Uh, yeah, life takes some strange turns sometimes. It does. Uh, and her I, memorial fund was the reason we were able to remodel our, our office in Nicaragua. Actually, the morning of her accident, she was with some of our volunteers, Tom Ordens from Plover. And he's. Um, the two of them sat down and drew out a plan how our office in Managua needed to be remodeled to fully utilize the space. And that was like at 11 o'clock, and then around 1 o'clock is when she fell. And uh, so my father had made the decision to use her memorial fund to carry out the plan that she had drawn in the morning. Well, and, you know, and I know your mother had been active in the community um, e even prior to this. I think it's a, a wonderful legacy. Uh, and a testament to the work that she's done, but it's it's not just your mother and you. I mean, your your family's involved in this. You, you, I it mean, your dad's doing quite a bit too. Yes, and uh, there's so many volunteers in the community that get involved. Um, Patty's yeah. one of many. Uh, as we were preparing for the show, I was thinking um, we have students who are involved. We have working people that are involved. Retired people all ages, all education levels. Um, if you have an interest in helping people and international, there's definitely a place to volunteer. To learn anything. And that brings up a good point. So Patty, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in the Wisconsin-Nicaragua partnership and some of the things that the volunteers um, have done in the past. Sure, sure. Well, I've been involved probably, you know, I was aware of it, but probably more actively involved for the last 20 years and uh, started with Sharon and uh, I was a friend of, of hers and Bob's and and um, what I remember is is after the, the major earthquake, I think when she was sitting at dinner time and said, hey, we need, they need some help. And so we all kind of chipped in. Um, so there was certainly that interest. And uh, then uh, later I was uh, very pleased to be part of a Rotary project. And we did an international project, the Stevens Point Rotary Club did an international project with um, Esta Lee mm -hmm. and did some remodeling on a small, on the small uh, school at the time, preschool. And that is, I know you just met R Maria mm -hmm. that was here and that is where she's operating out of. Um, so that, that, was a, that was a big uh, part of my getting involved and um, who can say no to, to, <laughs> to Amy and who could say no to Sharon basically. I don't think they let you say no. No, no, that, that's not part of the repertoire. So I've, um, I wasn't able to travel at the time, but later in 2013, I did travel on the, the learning track as, as you're going. And um, <clears throat> so saw firsthand what they were able to do with that fairly small amount of money in, in terms of remodeling and got, got involved, got introduced to the learning centers and uh, just was, have been uh, very, very impressed with, with the whole organization and the connection. Amy always says it's, it's people to people and that's exactly what happens. It's you meet people, you um, get to know them. Um, I've hosted several here that I've met in Nicaragua. I've seen um, all kinds of growth uh, from uh, you know, a young woman who started out in the first learning center ever in in Nicaragua, go on. Uh, she had set a goal to complete high school. This was when she was a young mother, mm -hmm. and um, I was there in '14, I believe, when she was given recognition for having completed that goal and gone on to college. And she has since she was here. I hosted her here when she came for our 50th anniversary. She has gone on and and taken leadership roles and taught in the learning center. She's uh, one of the expert sewers um, with the Chico Nico, uh, Chico Nico dress project and also with the burn project that we haven't even touched on yet. 
And you know, it's those kinds of connections and seeing that kind of growth. That's just in a that's just a nutshell of what happens. And uh, it's it's very much a, a connection. It's not just giving a donation, doing something once. It's it's having an ongoing connection. Full-time commitment sometimes, mm -hmm. sure. Well, you know, and that's interesting. You know, I know a lot of people when they first hear the the, uh, the name Nicaragua, they, they, they've had their share of political turmoil over the years. The cool thing about this group is it doesn't get involved in politics. It's humanitarian. Yeah, right. And like, like uh, was said, it, you, it's people to people. So Amy, touch on the, the learning centers. Let, let people know, our listeners know, what the learning centers are and what's done in those learning centers. Well, the learning centers started out between one woman in Madison, Wisconsin, and one in Los Cedros, and they were thinking about how is it that we can help rural women who would like to earn an income to take care of their families. And they started out with the idea of having a sewing center where women could come and learn skills. Well, that was um, almost 30 years ago, and now we went from one sewing center to 100 learning centers. We have 100 in our directory. And basically what a learning center is, is it's a place um, where people can come and learn skills. And the nice thing about our learning center program is they're all self-governed, meaning the people who live in Nicaragua decide what classes they're going to take, who's going to be doing the teaching, what they're going to teach, where they're going to have it, how they're going to meet, uh, if they're going to be paid classes for free. Um, that's all up to them. Our role is we collect items that help support the classes that they decide to teach. For example, sewing, of course, is a very popular um, class. Mm -hmm. Cake decorating, cosmetology, um, who doesn't get their hair cut? Right. <laughs> who doesn't have a birthday party? Uh, who doesn't wear clothes? <laughs> you know, there's always exceptions to those three things, but the majority of people do those. And so it's a very marketable skill, uh, learning those things. And it's a way for women to earn income. We don't want them to go off being away from their families for long hours at a time, earning little money. Uh, we want them to have a dignified income, be able to feel good about what they're doing, take care of their families. That's really an important component. Well, and, and it's of the more about center. just skills um, to earn an income. Uh, I, I looked over some of the volunteer programs that have been, and it's an extensive list of that yes. volunteer program uh, that had been done over the years. I mean, there's basic wiring for electricity and things like that, things that we would normally take for granted. Uh, you know, you take it to the shop and have them fix it or something. Right. They don't have those resources there, baking and cooking mm -hmm. uh, skills. Patty, have you been uh, involved when you went to the learning centers? What, what sorts of things did you do or what was your impression of these things? Uh, yeah, centers? so uh, I did, a, I brought a couple of different projects. Um, the first one was a sewing project. Okay. And um, that was, I'm a quilter, so it was a quilting project. And it was just a little introduction to, a, you know, a different quilting techniques. And we came off with a little product that could be used as a decoration mm -hmm. or, or whatever. And the second year, actually, um, we did making, we made boxes out of paper and uh, started out with, uh, you know, using uh, National Geographic with some nice photos to make the <laughs> pictures on the outside. Nice. And then also went to, um, you know, a plainer paper that could be decorated that people liked. And, you know, that was that was just something that I had observed. They, they make a lot of jewelry and that sort of thing. And I had just purchased some jewelry from when I was doing some traveling in a, in a paper box, so I thought that's where I came up with the oh, idea. Nice. So that was that was quite popular. The kind of fun thing about all of this is that um, so it's encouraged that you bring along samples and also, if you can, something that's actually drawn out. Because what they'll do is they will if, um, take take the project and then teach it to mm -hmm. other other participants, you know, as they go out into the other learning centers, volunteer to volunteer. So yeah, it is, it's a very, it's very varied. I would, we also visited several learning centers. They're in, they're in homes, they're in, in, uh, you know, the smaller buildings <laughs> that are, you know, either like, like a, the school building that, that the Rotary Project was involved with. And, um, it's it's a it's a real eye opener, I guess, to see what the people do and the individuals that run them and how gracious they are and dedicating their time, and uh, you know how important it is to their communities. Yeah, how many learning centers are there? 
Amy, do you remember? We have 100 on the directory, but we have 67 well-functioning learning centers. Okay. You know, like anything, people come and people go, uh, family status changes, employment changes, uh, living conditions change, and so uh, the learning centers change over the years. Some are more active than others. Um, some are more efficient than others. Some have libraries, some don't. I mean, each what one you had, is unique. What you had told me, too, is that the learning centers aren't necessarily a physical structure. They are not. It's just a group of people wanting to do something, and that They're, might be gathering around a, a table in the middle of the town um, to, to do these things. Right. But the ones that are physical structures, um, we have to stock those. They have to stock those. So they need all sorts of things. And I know over the years, um, the city has made some donations of equipment that they don't use anymore, tables, chairs, things like that. Talk about that, because that's actually a very big part of the program, too. It is, and we have a shipping component to our organization, and we send, on a good year, we'll send probably 10 40-foot containers. Okay, like supplies. shipping containers, like the semi-containers. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. wow. And uh, the things that you mentioned, the tables and chairs, if you're going to teach a class, having tables and chairs is an important item to have. Um, the sewing machines, we've there's probably been over 3,000 sewing machines that have been sent from Wisconsin to Nicaragua. Uh, we send a lot of sports equipment for the youth programs, uh, a lot of fabric, scissors, needles, sewing notions. Um, it's, it's a complicated in that uh, there's a wide variety of things that we send. The Northside McDonald's, when that was remodeled, mm -hmm. uh, all of that was going to the landfill. And one of our volunteers happened to be in there one day and said to the manager, so what are you going to do with all this? And they're like, out. You want to come and get it? Be my guest. And so we got a group of volunteers that went in and uh, took out the tables and chairs and the benches, and now those are being used in the learning centers. Nice. And also the public hospital in Managua, there are some of the McDonald's benches okay. that I have seen. <laughs> That's pretty so, interesting. And the um, Pulver McDonald's, same thing, they had remodeled, and um, that brings to mind uh, one of our volunteers. When the Pulver was... Um, McDonald's was being remodeled. The Olive Garden in Green Bay also had 200 chairs they wanted to donate to us, but we didn't have any space because our warehouse north of Stevens Point was full up. And so Bob Moody graciously let us use one of his semi-trailers. Um, and I was thinking, well, how am I, I don't drive a semi-trailer. How am I going to get it to Green Bay to pick up the chairs? Well, Dave Laddick uh, just retired, and his passion is driving trucks. And, and that's a nice thing about our organization is people have skills or interests that they can use in our programs. And so I asked Dave, hey, how would you like to drive a semi? And he's like, all right, that's my thing. So he drove it, and he um, stored. we stored the McDonald's tables and chairs and the Olive Garden so Chairs. if someone out there watching and listening wanted to, to help out, make a donation, uh, what sort of products or items um, can you use? Well, the three classes that I mentioned, the sewing, uh, the baking, and the cosmetology or hair classes are by far the most popular. Okay. Almost all of the learning centers have those three. Uh, we also have some carpentry classes. So, you know, maybe somebody has five hammers. Do you really need five hammers? Mm -hmm. um, they can donate it to our organization. And what I would recommend is we put together this nice little booklet. Okay. And um, it today we're talking about a tiny fragment of what goes on in our organization. And this booklet highlights um, the different programs we have and the kind of things that are useful mm -hmm. for the programs. And people can um, look that up. And I, I strongly encourage people, if you're going to donate something, make sure that it is, it's got a lot of life left into it. You know, there's been this saying, well, something's better than nothing. Well, not always. Not always. Not uh -huh. always. And they can always call your office, too, and ask if right. this is something that you might right. be able to use. What's mm -hmm. the number at your office? 715-346-4702. Uh, okay, and there is a website, right? Yes. What's it's, that? It's uh, uh, wisnic.org, www.wisnic.org. Okay. And also, another way um, people in the area can learn about our organization is the third Thursday of the month, we have a warehouse north of Stevens Point. Okay, on 2nd uh, Street. Yes, 2139 North 2nd Drive. And um, 
we used, my dad used to actually do a lot of the packing, and he still does a lot of packing. However, we decided, you know, we should really open this up to the community. And so the third Thursday of the month, we invite people to come out to the warehouse. That's the day they can bring their donations. They can pack their donations. Everything that gets sent to Nicaragua has to be palletized and put in a 4 by 4 by 4 box or pallet. Um, and it's a lot of work, and so people can come out. Uh, we usually start around 9 a.m. and go until hmm, 3 or 4. It depends how much stuff we have, and we usually have a lunch. People are welcome to bring some food if they nice. want, so it's a social time, too. And open to the public, completely open. Absolutely. So even if you just want to see what it's about. Right, you and you by. don't even have to stay. If somebody wants to come and just check it out, it's, a, it's an eye-opener. Most mm -hmm. people who go into the warehouse are like, holy cow, I had no idea this was going on, and I had no idea this volume of donations were being moved from Stevens Point. Yeah. It's, it's really quite impressive, and also we're very grateful to the Department of Defense because that is how our vehicles get to Nicaragua. There's probably been 25 um, ambulances and about 35 fire trucks that have been sent from Wisconsin to Nicaragua. And those are the ones that well, Portage County just um, retired one mm -hmm. of the ambulances. Yep. And uh, working with County Executive Dreyer, she was on board right away um, to donate that ambulance to Nicaragua. So it's sitting somewhere right now it's waiting for us yeah, waiting for <laughs> yes. a C5 Galaxy to yeah. become available. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, they load up vehicles, old ambulances and old fire trucks from other communities um, that and then they get shipped down there. Now um, when I talked to Jaime Delgado uh, when he was here for the 50th, it was um, alarming some of the things that they are required to deal with down there. Managua, the capital city, has a million plus people. Yeah. And uh, I'm told they have seven ambulances to yeah. cover it. Portage County has 70,000 people, and, and we've got seven ambulances, or we'll have soon seven ambulances. It's getting better, but there's a lot of communities that just don't have a fire department. Yeah, I, I the, can't imagine what it's like. And, you know, you made a comment about um, the old vehicles. That is an exception to the rule. Um, as far as something being older, mm -hmm. technology is changing fast. And when you buy a vehicle these days, it's much harder to repair than it was years ago. Right. The same holds true with sewing machines. They used to be okay. a lot more basic. And I heard something on the radio the other day about tractors, too. They're so complicated now. Any little thing goes wrong and the sensors go off. Oh, and to get it repaired, you have to have a scan. You know, years ago, a tractor could be out in the field leaking oil and it would still go. Well, now it shuts off. <laughs> and with the fire trucks, they actually prefer the older ones because they're more maintainable. I mean, they can repair it. Um, so, um, well, yeah, I mean, really that, quite valuable the older vehicles. It's important to note too that I mean, you, you can't just walk down to an auto parts store and, and uh -uh. pick up the <laughs> gonculator or whatever you happen no. to need. Um, so yeah, that's um, Larry Pingle had told me about some of the things um, that he's done as a volunteer going down there and the, the compression garments and things like that. The one thing that stood out to me was when a group was here for that 50th anniversary. Um, they were getting a tour of our fire department and going through our ambulance and paramedic units, um, looking, and they were showing them all the supplies, and the, and the one gentleman um, kind of got emotional, and it, the question was asked, you know, what, what's wrong, what's wrong? He says, you know, you have more supplies in your ambulance than we have in some of our hospitals. That's um, true. And that, that's pretty eye-opening. Mm -hmm. It is. And like anywhere, you know, there's different levels. They do have a metropolitan hospital that's quite upscale. But if you don't have money and you don't have insurance, you can't go there. So you have to go to the public hospital, and, and those oftentimes aren't. Um, well, and sometimes you got to get there your, your own way. It's right. not like the ambulance can come out and pick you up in, in some of these villages. No. So but getting back to some of the, the learning centers and the, the crafts that they make, I know that at your offices in the old Nelson Hall, um, you have a little store. Tell us about the yes, store. Yes, yes. We have a store that uh, we have beautiful items from Nicaragua that are made by the people in Nicaragua. Uh, the Chica Nica dresses 
are something that came about because one person, kind of like yourself, as Linda Pract, went on one of our learning center trips and she said, you know, these women have exceptional sewing skills. You should come up with a product. So they came up with an 18-inch doll dress. At that time, the American Girl was popular. Okay. And now they think there's 34 styles of dresses, and there's 19 women who sew these dresses. And over 10,000 dresses have been sold since they started the project. And so it's a way for the women to earn an income. They get paid right away when uh, we buy the dresses from them, and then we bring them up here and sell them. And there's also jewelry. Uh, we sell Nicaraguan coffee, which is delicious. Right. And pottery and um, just unique items from Nicaragua. And so if someone wanted to come by and see some of the items in that store at Nelson Hall, um, what are the hours of operation when the stores are uh, Generally 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, we're there when they can come in and browse around. And if nothing else, you know, we have um, brochures about different projects that we have, and we have bulletin boards, and people can see some of the current activities. And also, Wisconsin Nicaragua Partners has a Facebook page, okay. and that's been the easiest to update. Um, the website sometimes a little harder to get <laughs> updated, but Facebook is pretty easy. We have an eyeglass trip there right now, and we have several people from Stevens Point that right this moment are distributing eyeglasses. And um, Yeah, so it's not all just about the learning centers. There's other right. trips, uh, humanitarian trips that go down there too. Yes. Uh, as mm -hmm. you said, the eyeglasses, is, are there other ones that I'm missing? School groups, and something really exciting that's happening is the uh, Stevens Point Area Retired Teachers Association gives out grants, and okay. we had applied for one to buy materials for the high school Spanish students to make books for the libraries in our learning centers. And so the kids are finishing those up this semester and we'll be taking them down to the libraries. And the kids in Nicaragua really like those better than the, the uh, regular books. I mean, okay. they like the regular books too, but uh, the students who make the books put a picture of themselves in the front oh. and say, you know, this is where I live, you know, and I have this many family members, and a little bit about themselves. So well, that's great. It's uh, another you know, connection. We only have a 30-minute show, and it's sometimes hard to um, stress the significance of this program that's been in place over 50 years and has helped so many people. Uh, but I know that you at one time told me a quote from an ambassador. Uh, from John Furr, he works in the embassy, and uh, can you um, can you read that? Sure, yes. The, uh, we have good. We're a non-political organization, but we have good relations with both governments. And I would expect. You and we to like too. to keep them informed of what we're doing. And um, John had made this comment. He said, "Our job in cultural affairs is to encourage people-to-people -people interactions between the citizens of the United States and Nicaragua, whether through education, job training, medical care, community safety, etc. And no one does this better than WNP." I've spoken with Mirna, a community college alum from one of our programs about the learning centers all over the country. I visited firehouses. Um, I've seen other nonprofits. The ambassador herself has joined the WNP community to celebrate their truly miraculous burn garment program. WNP brings Americans and Nicaraguans together as good as anyone, and they make our job much easier. Wow. So it's nice to hear that. And you know, you made a good point in that many people don't know what the Stevens Point Estelle Partner City is. When you drive into town, you see those signs of the three international groups, and something on the horizon is the Cultural Commons Project down by the river. Good point. And the whole reason for that is to help people have an avenue so they can learn more about these international relationships that Stevens Point has. And I saw that article about um, Stevens Point being the top 10 college towns. We're pretty and awesome all around. Seriously, diversity is really important for Stevens mm -hmm. Point and the cultural yes. commons would be a fantastic um, right. contributor be a, be to a that. a nice centerpiece. Uh, and to... we're, if anyone's interested in that program, you can contact us for more information and we'd really like to break ground this summer but we're about $50,000 short of our goal. Okay. So we're really looking for anyone who's interested in supporting this project. Mm -hmm. Great. So. Um, just about time to wrap up here. Give us one more time how they can get in touch with you if they want to learn more about the program, um, you know, where they can go to or, or how they can contact you. can call our office, 715-346-4702. Uh, okay. You can look on the website, which is wisnick.org. Uh, you can look on the WNP Facebook page. Um, you can stop by Nelson Hall, room 129, and uh, we have sheets about the Stevens Point Estelle Partner City. and. Yes. 
we have some events coming up. Yes. Yeah, Patty, tell us about right. those real quick. Right. Okay. Well, we uh, we'll be having a, a quarterly social gathering at MEJ's March eighth at five o'clock okay. in the afternoon, and that would be to to share uh, social time and and dinner, and also hear about the the trip that is going okay. um, to Esteli and to various other parts of Nicaragua. So we will be setting times throughout the year for that, and that would be an excellent way to get involved. Um, if you're here in Stevens Point, especially. Beautiful. It's a well, great that's connection. about all the time we have. So, Amy, Patty, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for watching and/or listening at home. And until next time, we've been Talking Point with Mayor Mike. <laughs>